guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's Monday, 23rd of November. Alan Ruff and Tom McManus and Alison McConnell all here ready uh, to give us uh, their thoughts on the weekend's football. And it's been some interesting football results over Saturday and Sunday. You can give us your thoughts on our Facebook. You can like, share and follow. And on YouTube, if you see the red button there, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well for uh, no shortage of opinion. A wee bit of banter here and there. Uh, and of course, we want to know what you think of your favourite team's performances. Before we get to the meat and bones of the results, let's look at some of the news just coming in. And I'm just seeing there uh, that it looks as if two more positive tests from the under-21 camp, um, two members of the backroom team. And this, of course, uh, Scotland's women's head coach, Shelley Kerr, was identified as a close contact of one of the new positive cases. So she is self-isolating as well. Now, uh, this obviously um, brought about some very angry words from Derek McInnes. We'll hear very shortly. But uh, quite simply, a number of uh, teams, Ruffy, have suffered losing key players. Yeah, and you can see why. You know, they're, they're up in arms about the whole thing. If you're... If you're in your own uh, camp, you know, going by the rules and doing everything properly and then you let people go away and for some reason, you know, that uh, when they come back, uh, it's not happening. Uh, it's a, it, it, I'd love to know how they, how they get the bottom there because we had the doctor, we had the Scottish doctor coming on saying, look, we're, we're 100%, we've got them on bubbles, we've got them on groups, we've got them taking photographs of where they're sitting, who they're, who they're eating with, all that, so... A month ago, it was this isn't going to happen to us, and then lo and behold, it is uh, in a big way. So, if you're a club manager and you're, you're minus two or three players, you're going to be fizzing. Yeah, and here's Ian Maxwell, the SFA chief executive. This is a statement he's released. Um, I understand and uh, empathise with the frustrations raised by clubs discovering on a match day that players on international duty or close contacts of positive cases is hugely challenging to any club, and I apologise or disruption caused. It is important to clarify the under-21 squad undertook four COVID tests, one in the days prior to meeting and one on entry to the camp, both of which were in addition to the two official UEFA mandatory tests prior to each game. I understand the question of an additional testing round, but the clinical view is this would not necessarily result in additional positive tests being returned at that time due to the virus's incubation period. Uh, we have conducted an examination of protocols undertaken and it is the view of our chief medical officer they are in line with the established protocols. Now, uh, this is what Derek McInnes, the Aberdeen boss, had to say after his side suffered a 4-0 loss to Rangers. It's kind of disappointment for the SV. They just deliver the news and got to deal with it. And that's what sticks in managers' throats, and a lot of clubs are unhappy. This isn't just me, it's me in a minute. There's a lot of managers out there and clubs unhappy with the, the, the attitude, really, of having to just uh, deal with it. Deal with it. Um, we'll take your players, you deal with the consequences. Yeah, um, it's a hard one to take, Tom, especially when there are key players like the likes of Lewis Ferguson. Can't call on him. Mm. Yeah, listen, I understand Derek McInnes' frustration there. Um, you know, it's really, really frustrating when you get, I think it was a call the night before or in the morning of the game, that their players can't play. I think Motherwell were the same with Alan Campbell. So, listen, it's these, these guys, are the, the, the job's on the line. You know, managers, they live and die by results. And uh, if they've not got their best players available, then they're going to get in the neck from their supporters through no fault of their own. You know, they're sending these players away, you know, in good faith, sending them away on international duty and, uh, and trusting the SFA you know, to keep them, keep them safe and keep them in the bubble and, um, you know, they're coming back and they're not available. So it was a big blow for Rangers, uh, sorry, for Aberdeen at the weekend. Lewis Ferguson, Conor McClellan not, not available. And obviously with Motherwell as well, with, with Alan Campbell and Barry Maguire. So I think there's something got to be done about it. And uh, or else, you know, listen, managers don't no, no want to send their players away on international duty and we don't want that. You know, we want the, the, the clubs and the international you know, managers to, to have a trust in each other. But... If you're coming back and, you're, and your players are not available, then you're going to think twice about sending your players away. Yeah, just some other news before we start to talk about the games as well. Um, Kenny McLean could be out for four to five months. Twisted a knee for Norwich City against Middlesbrough. Ali, that's a blow as well for Scotland. 
It'll be a blow first and foremost to, to him himself, I'm sure, because what you have now is a, is a number of players all eyeing up a, a place in the squad for next summer's European Championships. I'm sure that the competition for that will be fairly intense, but for somebody who played a, a key role in, in scoring that uh, fifth penalty in the semi-final and then scoring in, in the, the playoff final too, I'm sure he'll be devastated. Yeah, absolutely. OK, that's some of the news that's been breaking. Let's get into the meat and bones of uh, what happened at the weekend, quite simply. It was Hibs 2, Celtic 2. What did you make of the game, Tom? Um, I thought it was a poor first half, Peter, uh, from both teams. I thought Celtic obviously had a lot of possession. Um, they put a lot of crosses in the box, a lot of corner kicks, but nothing really clear cut. You know, I always felt that Hibs were quite comfortable in containing Celtic. Uh, second, Hibs were terrible on the ball in the first half. You know, as poor as I've seen them on the ball, um, they showed no courage or bravery to get the ball down and get at Celtic. And I felt as if Hibs could just up it and keep the ball and uh, and put Celtic under pressure, then they could get joy. And that's what happened in the second half. You know, Hibs go go two 0 up. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I I didn't think at all that, that Celtic were going to get back in the game. You know, they get the penalty. I think it's a harsh penalty kick on Paul McGinn. I think by the letter of the law, his hand is in a unnatural position just so you can see why the referees gave it but it's incredibly harsh uh, and then the, the, the last goal Paul Hanlon who was outstanding on the day had a great game uh, a guy who I've praised so many times on Hibs TV and gave him man of the match he has a brain freeze and he lashes at a ball and we could put it anywhere and he puts it straight to to lax out who in fairness finishes it really well so <coughs> I felt coming away from that game that it was two points dropped for Hibs and uh, earlier in the season when, when Rangers drew with Hibs to each I felt, by the way, that's a great point for Hibs because I thought Rangers were really good. It was a total opposite at the weekend. And I think that shows you the gulf between the two clubs at the minute, to be honest. Yeah, OK. Well, I'll be blunt. I think the players have thrown the manager under the bus. I think Diego Laxalt's uh, goal to equalise saved the manager from the sack, in my view. Um, that's how close it was. I don't think he'd have seen out Saturday night if Celtic had lost that game because Rangers would have been in an unassailable position, uh, in my view, even with two games in hand. Um, I asked the manager at the end of the game if he thought Celtic's title defence was hanging by a thread. There's a long way to go, but uh, what I'm looking for is a level of performance and getting a run together. But the attitude of some of the players has to be better, you know. And it's, I think the game's endemic over season where we have good spell and then, uh, you know, a really poor spell and then, you know, 20 minutes of brilliance. You know, so they're capable of that, but they've got to sort of start really wanting to put it all together for the 90. OK, I don't believe, Alison, that Celtic can go on a run. Rangers are 11 points clear. I think some of the players are trying to work their ticket out of the club. Some of their conduct is simply unbecoming of a Celtic player and um, he hasn't got any options. I think the one criticism I could make of Neil is I think he's indecisive. I think he doesn't know whether he's got a back four or a back three. Uh, and not to play two centre forwards for me is, is what's costing them. They, they, they just play in front of teams constantly and... Every team in the Premier League right now can work them out. Well, to, to take it point by point, I would agree. I think uh, I think at the minute, Celtic's best form of defence would be attack. I think they're far stronger middle to front than they are at the back. So for me, playing with two up front gives you an option and can alleviate some of the pressure on what has been a very porous defence so far this campaign. Um to go back to your original point about whether or not they can piece together a run of form, well, on paper you can. The, it, it remains a, a plausible option to go and, and catch Rangers, to put pressure on them, to, to make up the, the points via the games in hand and then, and then go to, to Ibrox on the 2nd of January and see if you can then close the gap and come away with three points. But it's all very well talking uh, about and hypothesising about the possibility and plausibility of that. The problem right now is that there is no evidence on the park that it's a possibility. It's been such a staccato season from Celtic. It's been stop-start all the time. We've, we've not seen a full, fluent Celtic, the, the kind of form that we saw post-Dubai and, and, and post-winter break last year up until the middle of March. It just seems to have dissipated. And in its place, there is, they look vulnerable, they look weak, they look unimaginative, there's a lack of creativity, and I would agree with you. I think there are a number of players who look, who are betraying their own um, their own feelings through their body language on the pitch. I think um, 
you watch the penalty that Hibs scored on, on Saturday afternoon and you have a number of players standing there with their hands on their hips, completely passive to what's going on round about them. Uh, and that, for me, is, is the biggest problem. You do not have every player there putting their shoulder to the wheel. If you look on paper at both of these squads, what squad would you say has a stronger team? You would say Celtic have a stronger squad of players than Rangers, yet Rangers at the minute look well organised, well drilled, well managed, everyone knows their jobs and they're getting the results that are reflective of the work that's going on on the training ground. Yeah, the, the problem with that, Ruffy, is Celtic may well have uh, a bigger, better squad in, in many people's eyes, but what they don't have is a camp that's all together. They have players in that wow. squad that are quite simply working their ticket their heads are elsewhere, either their agents working the ticket and telling them that they, you know, you can get them a move, or you've got other players in there who quite simply think they're better than Celtic and want out. Uh, and some people will not put themselves out in front for the manager and put their heads on the block. That you know, it's a wee hamstring here, it's a wee injury there. You know, I won't play through this. Mm -hmm. That's the problem right now. And and Neil Lennon, I think, has got a difficult job getting them back on track. And I'll tell you now, Ruffy. There'll be a list on Peter Lowell's desk saying the next the next slip up he has to go. Here is the yeah. list. That discussion's already taken place. Yeah, but I think he knows he's got to go on a run. He's got to go on some kind of run. He's got to get everybody uh, behind him again. Uh, the last time it was yeah, it looks as if he's going to lose his job, and then he got a good result. I think it was in Europe, and that sort of a dampened everything. But every time there's a bad result, it's going to raise its ugly head. Uh, and that's the thing you can't do, you know, if you're if you're going and challenging for 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 a bigger picture, you know. But I think his biggest problem is, and it's not a criticism for me. Lenny Lenny has be, always been very vocal about his team and his players. If they're not playing well or he doesn't think they're playing well, he, he lets them know and he lets the media know and he lets everybody know. Now that can either work two ways. I thought it worked at Hibs. I thought when he was at Hibs and he came out and slaughtered the team verbally to everybody. He had, a, he had a dressing room full of players that reacted to the criticism and wanted to get better. I think, unfortunately, this time, the criticism he's thrown out, he's not got enough in that Celtic dressing room that want to prove him wrong. And I, that touches on a wee bit of what you're saying. I don't think he's got people in there who want to react to criticism. I think there's people in that dressing room who are going the opposite way and saying, well, I don't really want to play for you or be here, you know, where it wasn't the case at Hibs. He got a reaction at Hibs for the players any time he came out, and that's just not happening. Yeah, his biggest ally in the dressing room is his captain, Tam, but he's forced to take him off quite simply because Scott Brown, as I said in the column that I've written on PLZ Soccer, Scott Brown's only problem is he's getting old. That's it. So Lennon looks and thinks, I need him for leadership, and if he has to suddenly go to a plan B, he subs his captain off. Hmm. I don't like it. I don't think it's a good look, Peter, uh, subbing your captain off after an hour every week. I really don't. I think that your captain should be your main man. He should be playing 90 minutes every week. You know, I look at over the other side of Glasgow, their right back's their main man, the captain. Um, I look at in squads in England. So, listen, I think if you're going to do that with Scott Brown, um, you either don't, you don't play him um, or you give someone else the captaincy. I don't think you can keep given the hooting your captain after an hour, it's just, just not a good look. It just doesn't send out the right signal or the right message to the whole team that the, your captain's getting getting hooked off after 60 minutes every game. So I think that's something that Neil Lennon has to look at. And, uh, you know, if he's going to play Scott Brown, he, he plays him for 90 minutes. If he's not going to play him, then he doesn't. He sits on the bench. I don't think playing him for an hour or bring him on, bring him on with 20 minutes to go that he done at St. Johnson uh, last month is the right way to handle him. Yeah, John McLachlan on Facebook has said, you know, Ruffy going on a run, he needs he, he needs a defence and a, a better goalkeeper. I mean, mediocre uh, is an overstatement here, uh, or an understatement, I beg your pardon, on that defence. I mean, that defence, Ruffy, as I said, couldn't keep Waynes out of a close. I mean, the, you know, yeah. you know, the team's going to score against them. Well, you can't defend that because everybody is scoring against them, you know, and. Uh... And he'll say, oh, I've not had a settled back four or a settled back three. Might be the case, but uh, you've still got to go on with it. You've got quality players in there. You've got international players in there, you know. So there's something sadly wrong, you know. I mean, I know John Kennedy's a defensive 
coach uh, as well. I don't know what he's, his views on the whole scenario is. But I don't think, if Lenny doesn't know who his best back four is, back three, I don't think any of us know either. And that is a terrible position for a team of Celtic's calibre to be in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as well as that, take nothing away from Hibs, Tam. Listen, they scored they scored mm. two goals. Um, uh, they reacted quickly. Um, M- Jamie Murphy, like a flash, on the rebound. And then Jamie Murphy wins the header. Um, for Nisbet to finish, and the ball ends up in the in the bottom corner of the net. I mean, they've got to be given credit. Yeah, I, I do. I think the Habs were played really well the second half. They got themselves two 0 up, and they should have seen the game out. Um, you know, but in terms of Celtic's defending, you know, Neil Lennon labelled it as lazy. Yeah, I think Tom's just going to click back in in a minute. Okay. But one of the things that I did notice, uh, Ruffy, that I was going to say to you um, was the fact that Hibs should have had a penalty as, as well. They should have had another penalty, never mind the one that was awarded. I thought they were they were due a penalty as well in the first half. So did Jack Ross. Yeah, I, I think uh, in any other time it could have been given. There's no doubt about that. I, I even thought the, the penalty that Celtic got was, again, that silly decision you've got to make and I saw a lot more of them at the end of at the, at the weekend there you know it's that rule needs to get cleared up but really really does but uh and saying that you know I, I mean Tam saw the 90 minutes I only saw the highlights and that I am led to believe that Marciano was uh, the hip star man you know in this <laughs> game so, so Celtic must have been dead. he's a star Celtic man every week it's because, it must have been you, because you slaughtered them that's what I'm so Celtic must have had chances, you know, to win that game. But obviously, defensively, if you're going to lose goals like that, you're not going to win games. But uh, it's very noticeable. He's got his act together, so that they got him. Yeah, Tom, you were making the point. On, we missed your point there on Celtic. Yeah, defense sorry. Being lazy. Yeah, I, I think Neil Lennon was spot on. Um, I think you look at the the foul for the first goal, which is beat on, just barges Nisbet out the road. Um, just run with him. Nisbet was going nowhere. It's a needless foul to give away. And then just for the for the for the goal, you know, there's a long ball up. Murphy wins the header. Frimpong standing watching him, and then Beaton is standing watching Nisbet and lets him get his shot away. And then as Alison pointed out earlier, they've got a chance to get out of jail when the goalie saves it, saves the penalty kick. And uh, Beaton and Frimpong, who were at fault for the goal, are standing with their hands in their hips. It is shocking. It's lazy. It's, if I was a Celtic supporter sitting watching that, I would have been fuming. Um, but what, what, what I will say, Peter, is what a finish with Kevin Nisbet, the second goal. Oh. Uh, instinctive, bottom corner, and that's, that's what he's about, Kevin Nisbet. You know, he's, he doesn't take touches in the box, Peter. He, everything's first time, gets a yard, hits it, and uh, I thought it was a sensational finish. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, and I think we've got to point this out, sometimes if, if Celtic or Rangers lose a game, um, you know... Not all of us, but sometimes you forget about complimenting the side who've either got a draw or indeed a win. I do think Hibs should have had another penalty. I do think they should have managed to see it out 2 nothing up in the game. But Celtic can back it. And Michael Climey says Celtic's back line um, is uh, absolutely dreadful. Even with Julian back in, they are poor. Uh, listen, believe me, by the way, even with Julian back in alongside Ayer, Celtic were desperately looking for a centre-half before the two of them got their injuries. So to suggest that Julian comes back and Celtic are all rosy in the garden is pie in the sky as well. Michael Climey says, um, can't wait for the, the next Old Firm game when um, Rangers um, will pump Celtic. It's a classic word on this programme. Now. I wish I hadn't said, <laughs> wish I had said it all those weeks ago, but it's now, it's now, the, it's now the catchphrase. No, pump, not hump. Um, but uh, over, and, over and above that, you can tell how far Hibs have come with uh, what I believe is a very good manager. Jack Ross was disappointed with the draw. That's the obvious emotion because of how the game finishes in the position we were in. Um, but uh, it's probably day for me to accentuate like, more of the positives from our performance and um, what we put in the game and what we produced. I think we're deservedly ahead, and I think we feel as if we've we've done enough to win the game. But um, yeah, it's difficult to see past the frustration because obviously it's still raw at the moment. Yeah, so two two it was. Give us your thoughts. Um, uh, is the manager uh, dead man walking? Is the manager actually on a sugarly peg? Will they let him get to the next old firm game? If there are any more slip ups, will the axe fall? Give us your thoughts on it. Do you think there's a Did shot that's been drawn? Did anyone predict 2-2, Peter? 
Uh, you shut at you, of course you did. You know exactly <laughs> that you predicted two two. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're on a wee run. You're back on form, by the way. I think I think you and Ruffy had a, a sensational weekend. Um, we'll get to that in just a minute, but um, of course, uh, two two, and that actually um, brought us nicely to the next part of this title race, which was the Sunday Rangers against uh, an injury plagued Aberdeen. Uh, some of the players out because they couldn't be selected due to COVID as well. Uh, and you just get that sense that Rangers um, would actually go on and uh, have a successful day. Uh, and they did four goals to the good without any reply from Aberdeen. Um, Alison, uh, you know, there's a little argument going on here from some people on Facebook talking about, you know, who's got the better squad, Rangers. Rangers are the best team in the country at the moment. They are playing good football and they're scoring goals and their captain is leading by example. They're certainly the, the form team in the country at the minute, that's for sure. And what they have just now is momentum. And I think that becomes very powerful when you have a head of steam like that. What you see is just how it spreads throughout the squad when you see confidence and enthusiasm and belief. <clears throat> and what that gives you is, is an ability not to panic in, in moments of adversity during a game, but also to retain a, a confidence that the goals will come, that the performance will come, that the points will come. And, and the converse of that is true too. If you look at Celtic, when you when they lose a goal, you can sense the fear that goes through the squad. You can you can feel the, it, it's almost tangible, the, the sense of trepidation that goes through the team. Uh, but I think w when you have momentum, it's very, very difficult to, to derail it. Uh, and the only thing that will stop it is for, for Celtic now to, to go on a run of games and, and try and put some pressure on Rangers because I think the only thing that will put them under pressure just now is, is maybe the, the psychological element of it, if Celtic are breathing down their necks again. But that seems like a, a fair distance off at the minute. Well, if that's a hope, um, Alison, that uh, you're throwing out there that maybe Celtic fans are holding on to, uh, for me, Tam, it's a forlorn hope. Can this Celtic side go on a run? Not in my book. Can this Rangers side go all the way to January the 2nd without losing a game? Very much on the cards because you look at, the, you look at their bench now. People are itching to get on. They want to get on and score the goals as well. They want to be part of it. Yeah, I, I, listen, I, I, Rangers were very impressive again yesterday. I think the desire and the belief that they've got in the team just now and the hunger, I think that's the key word. They look a hungrier team than Celtic and that will really disappoint a lot of Celtic fans when they consider what's at stake this season. But Rangers look very, very hungry. You know, even when they lose the ball, they're getting after it. You know, they're pressing from the front. They look a really, really good side. Um, and, uh, you know, they got the rewards yesterday. Ryan Kent was outstanding. You know, his goal was brilliant. You know, I think he's I think he's the best player in Scotland. Uh, I think he's without doubt the best player in Scotland at the minute. And a key player for Rangers. Um I look at not not selling him, you know, in the in the in the window there. I think that was great from Rangers' point of view. I think, you know, that really sent the message out to the supporters uh, that we mean business this season. And uh, you know, talk about Celtic going on a run. I don't, I don't you think Rangers are, are balling about Celtic's results at the minute. I just think they've got their head down, they're concentrating them, they're just looking after themselves. They just think to themselves we just keep winning games, keep playing the way we're playing. We won the league this season. And uh, I don't think there's any Celtic fan right now, Peter, who would relish going to Rangers uh, on January the 2nd. I don't think anyone would think Celtic are capable of going there and winning with the form that both yeah. teams are in. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what was great about Kent, Kent uh, Ruffy. Even if you were playing five a sides, he, he, hits a, he hits a nutmeg and then takes a few <laughs> steps forward, sees that the shot is on and goes for it. You know, this is, this is the difference. Kent... We bit of skill goes past a man. This is why in Scottish football we actually get excited about players that can go past a man. Kent goes past him and thinks, shot. Celtic, if they go past a man, think there's a square ball on here. You know, Rangers are going forward. There's a confidence that they can shoot. There's a confidence that they can play through teams. And, and I thought Kent epitomised that with a goal. Okay, got a deflection. Who cares? Yeah, I think we were all waiting last year to see the, the Kent that uh, Rangers paid the money for. We're certainly seeing it this side this season. He's been absolutely tremendous. He's he is the player you you get up in the morning if that's the team you support. You hope he's in the team lines because he's going to be value for money, and that's what you're getting just now. You're getting well value for money, and and that's what happens. You know when you're on a run the way Rangers are on, 
And you can see why the confidence is there. I mean, any team that's on the run that they're on, they haven't haven't been beaten for ages, you know, they're not losing goals. You're, you're looking forward to a Saturday. You, you're not caring who you're playing. You just know that you're not going to get beat. And, and that's where the confidence comes from. And that's the way the Rangers are playing just now. Yeah, and Craig McGregor, who's on Facebook, I think makes a very good point. And this is relevant at the moment. He says, this is very similar to the season for 10 in a row in the 90s. Uh, the team trying to stop uh, the 10 in a row are fresh and hungry. The other side look deflated and spent. I actually think Craig has just nailed it there, Tom. Yep, I think the, the Celtic looks as if they're playing with the, the world of pressure on their shoulders to go and win 10 in a row. And Rangers look as if they're playing with freedom. Try to stop it. So I think obviously Craig's got a great point there um, in terms of the pressure and how it flips. I don't, I don't think there's as much pressure on Rangers to stop it as there is in Celtic to win it. That's the way it looks just now. You know, maybe people would argue that it doesn't, it's not that way, but I just think Rangers are playing with more freedom, more, you know, and uh, then Celtic are playing with so much pressure on their shoulders. When Celtic lost the goals and, at the weekend, you know, they looked as if they didn't know what to do. You know, in, in Celtic and Rangers teams, I've played in, in teams against the old firm where you go you go a goal up or you're drawn with 15, 20 minutes to go and you are prepared, you know it's coming. You know there's going to be an onslaught, there's going to be throwing bodies forward, there's going to be chances. I didn't get that that sense from Celtic at the weekend. Uh, when they went 2-0 down, I thought, Hibs are comfortable here, they're going to see this out until yeah. a couple of bad decisions defensively. So, no, I, I think he's got a great point there, Craig. And the difference uh, this time around is the manager is a year wiser and Steven Gerrard certainly not getting ahead of himself with regards to anybody handing out trophies in November. <laughs> look, I look at the league table every time we play. I'm not going to deny that, of course, but um, I've never known a manager to ever get carried away in November. Uh, I don't know how many games we played, 14, 15. Uh, there's a lot of football to be played, a lot of challenges, a lot of big... Uh, hurdles to get over, but I won't deny I'm happy. Um, I'd much rather be where we are. Well, uh, the other point on this, and, and I think Rangers deserve tremendous credit, they are flying their top of the league. They're 11 points clear, uh, Ruffy. Um, and, uh, you know, on Friday night, the best time to release your financial figures, uh, Rangers announced that they had lost uh, just over 15 million. The, um, the, the, the turnovers up on this, um, the losses increased by 4.3 million um, and the auditor said they need to find 8.8 uh, .8 million uh, to reach the end of the season um, and then a further 14.5 million by the end of next season. Now, that might set alarm bells going off uh, anywhere because obviously the auditors have said it's a going concern. But the one thing I would say in defence of that, Ruffy, is you have a chairman in there in Douglas Park who is calm, <clears throat> certainly doesn't seek publicity, is a Rangers man at heart and is just going about his business with other investors to make sure the club can keep going. I mean, there's no yeah. point in saying, oh, they're in debt, it's a disgrace. It's been eight years of, you know, uh, eight years of um, negative losses in the club because, you know, lots of clubs run at a loss. Uh, you know, providing you can keep servicing it, keep people investing, then on you jolly well go. Yeah, but I think at the beginning of the season, uh, I think uh, the management, the board have realised how important this, is, this season is. Uh, financially, they're throwing the kitchen sink at it. You know, they brought some quality players in. They're obviously on quality wages, and we wouldn't have been seeing the figures that we've got. But it's the old thing in football. You know, no, nobody wants to talk about the finance when you're winning games and you're you're so far ahead of Celtic. If it had been a reverse role that Rangers were in Celtic's position and these figures had come out, there'd been a lot of questions uh, that would have to be answered. But for me, Rangers have thrown everything uh, into, the, into the win for this one. They're relying on winning the league. They're relying on getting into Europe and getting a lot of money there to bring into the club. Uh, and you can gamble like that as long as you're winning games. And if they keep winning games, then nobody will question the debt. You know, the only reason they'll get questions is if they don't maintain, you know, that they obviously the, the thing that they're perceiving they're going to bring into the club. Uh, but if you win the league, uh, as I say, questions don't get asked. Peter, yeah, uh, uh, and, uh, yeah. Peter, I, I'd be more concerned if I was a Rangers fan looking at the losses if they had no sellable assets, which they didn't have before Gerard came in. You've now got Glenn Kamara, you've got Tav, 
because I can't say Tavernier. I, I always get stick for that. <laughs> you've got Bar- Bar- you've got Barisic, you've got Morelos, you've got Kent. So you've got four or five players in there that you can get 10, 15 million pounds for. So I think that's you know a comforting thing, comfort blanket for Rangers supporters thinking, listen, okay, we're running at a loss, but we've got guys we can sell in January. We've got guys that can sell at the end of the season that can fill that hole. Yeah, absolutely. And the priority, um, Ruffy, I think the kitchen sink was thrown in last year. This is the couch, the microwave, <laughs> and, 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 and everything this year. But I think for the three years going into this third season, um, you know, I, I I can't speak for the rest of the investors because I don't, I, I, you know, I don't have as great an insight into their background. But uh, Douglas Park, um, I think, deserves tremendous credit because he's gone about things quietly and he's gone about things with Rangers at heart. And I think he's the, I wouldn't say the opposite. I think he's totally different um, from some of the. Um, in fact, I will say the opposite. He's the opposite of some of the people that I don't think had Rangers at heart in the last seven or eight years, Ali. I think he's a different kettle of fish. One, a proven businessman with a good record. And two, he's looking at it and saying, look, I will I will put my money where my mouth is, but I won't be parading myself in front of a camera every two minutes. I think first and foremost, he's a businessman. I think uh, his priority is accounts and the books. But what, what you've seen and reflected in the, the figures that came out on Friday night is the, the biggest thing for me was, was uh, the wage bill coming up. There, there wouldn't be too much now between uh, Celtic and Rangers in terms of their wage bill. Uh, and that, for me, would, would tell you about the, the narrowing and the gap of quality because they, they have invested in the squad to try and try and stop the 10 and and really try and um, invest in the playing squad. But but I agree with Tam too. I think what you have now for the first time that they've not really had for a number of years is the option to cash in in players if you need to take it. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, let's have a look at the uh, results over the weekend to see exactly um, what happened Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Dundee United consigned Hamilton to yet another defeat to one Nicky Clark getting all the headlines, 2-2 between Hibs and Celtic. Uh, Killy with uh, 10 men defeated Ross County by three goals to one. And St Mirren with all those games in hand, that was a big, big win. So much so that it's prompted Gary Holt to question his long-term future. And you can hear some uh, falling in the background there. Uh, that's probably Ruffy falling off his chair because the gin had slipped off. Um, St Johnston and Motherwell, um, shared uh, a 1-1 draw and then Rangers with that emphatic 4-0 win over Aberdeen. <laughs> oh, it's Tom. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it was my sorry. I, 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 thought, I, thought the gla- I thought the glass had fallen with the gin and you'd made a dive, like the same dive you did for John Toshak <laughs> all those years ago, but it was uh, it was Bonzo making the news. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, um, lots of other results worthy of our consideration. Um and again, you mentioned, Tam, uh, Motherwell losing out in Alan Campbell. In the end, mm. it, it was 1-1. It wasn't, wasn't a classic. Stevie May, I think, deserves some special mention, Tam. He's, he's scoring goals now. Where I, I, I thought he'd lost his way for a couple of years. Yeah, he's got his confidence back, Peter. He's got his mojo back. And uh, listen, I know as a striker, when you get through lean spells, you feel as if you're never going to score another goal. The goal's narrow, they're like a matchbox. Uh, but once you get the goal, you, you know, you, you kick on, you get a wee bit of confidence and you feel as if you can score every game. So I'm glad. I like Stevie May. I think he's a good player. Um, he's very streaky. Um, he, he goes and runs where he, he doesn't score for a few months and then he'll score five or six in maybe seven or eight games. So he's that kind of striker and uh, obviously another goal at the weekend. But I think with Motherwell, point of view, I think if they had Alan Campbell and Barry Maguire, two guys that would have been in their, in their starting eleven. They might have just gave them the edge to go to go and win the game, but a, a decent point, I think, for for both clubs. Yeah, Motherwell's goal was a thing of beauty, Alison. Great passing, great finish by Ahara. They should have actually Ahara had the chance to win it late on. I only saw the highlights. Uh, I saw some of it. I was actually through at Livingston, so I just caught up on on the highlights over the weekend. But yeah, but I'll I'll take your word for it uh, over, if they were if they were worth it over the the course of the piece. But they they're another team who have come into a wee bit of form. I know they lost to Celtic just uh, immediately before the break, but but prior to that, they I think they'd won four out of five or, or five out of six. But they they'd certainly kind of found their feet after a, a difficult start. Yeah, um, Ruffy, um, still no alarm bells, no calling for his head. Um, Brian Rice watched his Hamilton side take the lead. 
But then Nicky Clark came up trumps with a with a double, and it was a, two good goals from Nicky Nicky Clark. His second one mm. was a peach. Yeah, it certainly was. But Brian Chipper's got to do that, you know. As long as he's getting effort from his team, you know, and he's showing, you know, that uh, they are prepared to put themselves about for him. That that'll be the encouraging bit. And there'll, there'll be fixtures coming up for Hamilton that are must wins, you know. And he'll know the ones that they are. Uh, they're not too. They're not too far away for another couple of teams. Obviously, Ross County sliding down that uh, league as we speak. Uh, so I think he'll have his eyes on them uh, when they'll be playing them. But uh, you no, know, as long as the players are just, putting themselves just, a bit. Just out of curiosity, are, so Ross, are, are Ross County playing right now and they're losing games while we're speaking, Ruffy? I'm not yeah, I wouldn't sure be, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Why can you get, how can you get beat 3-1 three, three, with 10 men? In 80 minutes of a game, come on. Well, to be fair, actually, I mean, Alison, I looked at Stuart Finlay. He dragged his, I mean, he played the ball, but he caught the man as well. Uh, I thought he, I thought it was the right decision by the, the referee, but fair play to Kelly. Uh, they come back with all guns blazing. Yeah, I was intrigued by Alec Dyer's comments just after the game when he was saying that... Uh... Just to that point, Tam, when she was going to give us chapter and verse on it. Yep, she was. Um, she was just about to kick off there. But no, <laughs> listen, a great, a, a, great, a great result for Kelly. Um, in at the top six now. I, I like, as I said on Friday, I like, I like Dyer. I like, I like the way he goes about his business. And Kamarnock at home are always strong. There's a difficult place to go in that AstroTurf. You know, it's not the best pitch. But as Ruffy was saying, that's a dreadful result for us, County. You know, if you go down to playing against 10 men eh, for 80 minutes of the game, you know, he lose that 3-1 is, is, a, is a poor, poor result. You don't see that very often at any level. So that'll be concerning for Ross County's uh, point of view. But brilliant result, great togetherness uh, and great team effort from Kilmarnock to get a, a big three points. Yeah, and of course, this is something that every team does. But Alec Dyer wanted to highlight it, the fact that they do train for going down to 10 men. Yeah, it was a nice a nice game for us. It's a nice weekend for me and, 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 and staff and the players because they've worked hard all week. With that, um, we train well, like I always say. Um, we do train that way because uh, 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 we have odd numbers every now and again. So I don't, I don't train usually with floaters. I usually have ten v nine or whatever we do in training, and and that works. No wins in the last five games for County. I don't think Stuart Kettlewell was too happy uh, with the performances. It's one of the worst in, uh, in in the last 12 years, which is criticism indeed. And, music uh, to Ruffy's ears. Well, absolutely music to Ruffy's ears. But, <laughs> uh, and the other thing I think was rather worrying, which some of the young players uh, won't want to hear, as Stuart Kettlewell said, you know, the young players that he picked didn't quite step up to the plate. Could be, but again, I, I I hang my hat on these guys and I keep telling you and I want to keep banging the drum, look, we've got young players out in the pitch and trying to promote young players, but um, you can only play at the level if you have um, a knowledge of how to play at the level. If you're going to play against guys like Dicker and Tushbowl in the middle of the park and Kabamba up front and Broadfoot at the back, they've got, they've got a wealth of experience, but I still back these guys to go and play against them, but um, today they've come up seriously short. Yeah, um, Ross County um, just above um, Livy, St Mirren and Hamilton. It's a dogfight uh, down there now. Uh, I mean, it was interesting, the game you were at, Ali, Gary Holt says he was just going to review his position after the defeat to St Mirren. He didn't just say it once. He actually went back to it on, a, on <coughs> at least two or three occasions. Uh, he, he, he continually reiterated that he wanted to, to go and reflect on it and take a good look at himself because it's. I think it's just a reflection of how difficult a season it's been for them so far. And I think losing guys like, um, you know, like Lyndon Dykes was always going to be an issue for them, but they just look like a team completely shorn of, of all confidence at all. And when you reflect that that ground for them was almost a was almost a weapon because the, their home form was excellent. They did not lose too many games there last season, but again, they look vulnerable even at home. Um, and there, there's no question that's um, firmly in the mire now because I think that's a, a point between them and St Mirren, but St Mirren have, have got three games in hand still to play, so they really are down there. I think only Hamilton have lost more games. I think that's them now lost nine games this season in the league. I think Hamilton have lost ten. Uh, yeah. But I, I think, or on current evidence, you would expect them t 
to be to be down there come the end of the season. And it's a it's a serious fall from grace when you consider that they finished fifth last year. Yeah, Jake Doyle Hayes with a deflected goal for St Mirren. He won't be caring. Um, did you like what you saw from St Mirren? To be honest, I thought it was a it was a very poor game. It, it really was. It was it was edgy. There weren't too many clear cut chances. I thought that that boy played very well, considering he's only in the club a couple of weeks. I thought he, he showed up well. Uh, his, his goal took a lucky deflection, which is sometimes just the 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 kind of goal that you get in a game like that. We've all we've all been there. Just a kind of towsy contest. Um, very, very few chances, but I would have to say I thought St Mirren probably just edged it. I thought they deserved it. Yeah, well, that's uh, all the games from the uh, uh, Premiership. Let's see exactly how that affected the pundits' predictions because I think there was a dramatic change over the weekend. <laughs> look at Tam's face. <laughs> oh, 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 look at that. That was a disastrous weekend for me, Ruffy. You've just uh, forged ahead into second place and Tam's excited by that. I mean, it's not he's not too far away. Um, 16 points of difference between me and Tam. You're nicely nestled in there. The difference is the reason why Tam's on a high, Ruffy, is if I finish last, uh, he might get a better meal out than he possibly would if you finish last. So. Oh, yes. I don't want Ruffy last. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a, I don't want a set meal for a tenner. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And by the way, here's the dregs out of my gin bottle. You know, that's, 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 one drink right. each. How, yeah, and a straw. Uh, here's a look at the Premiership table to see where your team uh, is uh, placed. And there it is. It's great uh, viewing for Rangers fans. Eleven points clear, despite the fact Celtic have two games in hand. Um, Everything around Ibrox is rosy at the moment, and you can tell that by um, our feed on Facebook um, because there's about three million messages um, of uh, Rangers fans absolutely delighted, and uh, and rightly so for the way Rangers are playing and the positivity and the goals that are coming. And uh, Celtic fans obviously uh, really concerned about uh, the predicament they find themselves in at the moment. Can you see Celtic going on a run? Um, can you see Rangers collapsing? Um, I don't think so. You can give us your opinion on that as well. And you can stay up to date with us because that's the one thing you will get on the programme. You'll get no shortage of opinion, Alison, Tam and Ruffy, uh, on the Monday. Um, you can give us your thoughts on that. And of course, there's Europa League matches coming up this week. Again, will uh, uh, Rangers enhance... Um, they are standing in the European stage in the Europa League. Um, can Celtic go to Sparta Prague and produce something on Thursday or will that intensify the pressure on Neil Lennon? Remember, they lost heavily to Sparta Prague at Celtic Park as well. So uh, they could be in for um, a, a rough 90 minutes uh, over in the Czech Republic. Although, to be fair, Sparta not playing too well at the moment. They've lost a couple of games, but... Um, Celtics defence. Give us your thoughts uh, on all of these topics. Um, as far as the team of the week is concerned, I think Gabriel, um, I think we might be questioning one or two of his selections. Have a look and see what you think. Jack Alnick made a couple of saves and earned that much needed clean sheet for St Mirren. James Tavernier scored yet again and has been the standout player in the league so far this season. Kirk Broadfoot managed to hold the Killy defence together despite having just 10 men. Diego looks out, lashed in the equaliser for Celtic, which could prove to be a vital point come May. Ryan Kent looked back to his best with a stunning goal and assist yesterday. Mitch Pinnock was man of the match for Killy and delivered the perfect cross for the opener. Mark O'Hara was industrious in his return to the midfield and got his third of the campaign. Jake Dole Hayes grabbed his first goal for the club and what a big one it was. Kevin Nisbet led the line excellently and bounced back from his missed penalty with a tidy finish. Kimar Roof looked at home in his free roll and grabbed a goal amongst his fluid attacking play. Nicky Clark is United's main goal threat at the moment and two well-taken goals put him on to nine for the season. OK, I'm, go I'm going to take issue with Gabriel's <laughs> team of the week. Um, I wouldn't even have had a Celtic player on the subs bench on his team of the week, um, to be honest with you. So um, how will Celtic get in it? I will never know, Tom. <laughs> What is, is, is he on Magic Mushrooms? What is that team about? I mean, fu 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 first, first and foremost, Marciano's got to be the goalie. He's got to be the goalie. Yeah. He no, he's got to be the goalie. It's just about Jimmy Murphy. Jimmy Murphy, I was just 
think he's a like, save to make. I don't think he's oh, like, Gavin, Gavin, honestly. <laughs> I phoned, I phoned, I phoned Gav like early just to make sure he was to make sure he wasn't in the team. It'll be selling next week. It's, uh, I mean, that's absolutely incredible. I have to, I have to look at that. There, Marciano was absolutely top drawer. I mean, he made yeah, a, yeah. a few, he made a few good saves. Not, um, not that. Uh, listen, sometimes Gabriel gets it one hundred percent right. Every now and then, you can have an, you can have an off. He's getting an a WhatsApp. Day. He's getting a WhatsApp. Yeah. After us. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to speak oh. to him as well. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, it's good to know he's back. He's had a. He's had a shoulder operation. Maybe the painkillers have actually made him a little bit hazy and he's forgotten all about certain players that should have been in it. Um, yeah, um, just before we go, a couple of things I want to get your thoughts on, lads. Hey, what about Paul McGowan, Ruffy? He didn't mince his words, did he? He said that the team um, just absolutely murder, including himself. He says nobody get past marks. They lost to Air United. And he said he wouldn't pay to watch Dundee right now. Um, and he didn't. He didn't. I mean, it was just... A, tirade of you know honesty from Paul <laughs> McGowan yeah well we'll be just to see how honest he is when Charlie comes on on Wednesday when you <laughs> see <him>. yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> I was thinking of, you see uh, what his what, opinion Ruffy? the whole thing is but, I thought to uh, myself I hope Charlie's on today <laughs> yeah. no well the, the standards I think we were all looking at Dundee to be one of the, the main challengers and it just hasn't materialised but sometimes these things can happen I think we all know Air United is a hard place to get into. You know, that they're a very workmanlike side, but Dundee just haven't come up to the mark at all. And it's a, it's a massive problem. Well, listen, the problem's there for all to see, Tan. They can't defend. They're like the, they're like the championship Celtic. Oh, the horrific at the back. The goalkeeper, I don't think I've ever seen the goalie making a save. The boy Hamilton. I think they need to, I, I, honestly, I think they need to sort their back line out or else it's going to cost. And I, I like James McPake. Um, I really do. I like him. He's a good guy and a good coach. But if he doesn't sort his, his goalkeeper and his defence out, then he's going to lose his job, unfortunately. Yeah. And what's this all about, uh, Ali? I mean, Kieran Tierney's down, down there fighting for Arsenal now. He's, he's fighting in the touchline. I mean, he's. <laughs> I, I spotted that and I thought to myself, there he is, battling away for the Arsenal cause. Martin Keown thinks he's to be commended for his attitude. Some other people... Um, I've been critical of him, but I like that. I like people who want to fight for the cause, Alison. I don't think you're the only one. I think uh, there, there's been a, a fair amount of um, social media comment from Arsenal fans. I think I, I read a few of them last night saying, give him, give him the armband because he's the only one that shows a, a bit of fight and a bit of desire. And I tell you what, how, how his former club would, would welcome that at the minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, uh, here's how it looked in the English Premier League o over the weekend. Um, and it wasn't a great return for Brendan Rodgers to Liverpool. They get thumped 3 nothing. A couple of games on tonight. Burnley against Crystal Palace and Wolves against Southampton. And as Tommy Doherty once said, I wouldn't draw the curtains to watch it. Um, and elsewhere, Manchester oh, United lost a 1 0 win. Eh, oh, come on. I mean, honestly. Wolves, Wolves, I like Southampton. watching Wolves. I like, I like watching Wolves. Wolves, Wolf, Southampton. Yeah, listen, I'm, 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 I'm midway through the box set of Sopranos, and there's no way I'm going to watch those two games. Geez, peace. But, Ruffy, do you not feel as if sometimes Alison and Tam yeah. are susceptible to all the glossy music and the, <laughs> the tackles and the, and the little 30 second clip? Yeah. Join us tonight <laughs> for Wolves against yeah. Southampton. No. No, I'll be hanging hanging on to the semi finals of Master Chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, ha I'm happy with that. Buddy. I'm happy with that. I'll tell you one thing though, which would be unbelievable. I don't know if you agree with me, Tam, but Jose, could he win the title with Tottenham? Um, I think he could. I think he could. I really do this season. I think it's wide open. I think obviously no crowd's been in. I think it's affected Man City as a shambles at the minute. Uh, but I, I, I still think Liverpool are the team to beat. You looked at, uh, they were brilliant last night. You know, missing a lot of players, but I thought they were they wiped the flow with Leicester, and uh, they've got good young players coming through as well. I thought Jones in the middle of the park was excellent for Liverpool. So they've got young guys like to come into the team. But uh, <coughs> I think it's wide open. I think Spurs will be up there. I think Chelsea just tucked in behind. They'll fancy their chances. So I, I, I do think it's. I think the special one could maybe just do this year. Yeah, you you, you of the same belief, Alison. Uh, I think Liverpool for me are probably more more likely to go, but I think it's there's so much intrigue around it. Um, 
my boy's a big Spurs fan, so uh, he he was uh, he was delighted last night. I told him to take a photo while they were top, so that he could uh, could last for a while <laughs> once he come off. How how is that gone down? Surely your boy deserves detention for being a, a Spurs fan. Have you have you reminded him of Vitor Baia and Porto? Have you reminded him of who the manager was, Ali? <laughs> 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 you need to have a word with him. <laughs> That's his team. That's his English team. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, like, uh, anyway, uh, apart from anything else, it's going to be a huge week. Ruffy, do you think it's a big week uh, in the sense that you know that there's going to be even more pressure on the Celtic manager? Yeah, obviously the result uh, midweek. Uh, if it's a poor one and it's not a good performance, again everybody will just lump on you. You know, uh, bet Fred at the weekend should handle that quite easily. Uh, but I think uh, he needs a good performance midweek. He needs a, a good win at the weekend and uh, and then pick it up from there. But that, that, that's an interesting point Tom said there about Man City. You know, no crowd there. I, I'm just wondering. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying it's 100%. I know it suits some teams and it doesn't suit others. I think Celtic's biggest problem is that 50,000 support. No mm. there. You know, I think it, 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 it must affect them in some way. And to spin that, you're saying, well, it's no effect in Rangers. And I get that, you know, but I just think certain teams need that kind of power behind them to maybe when it's 2 nothing to, to drive on and drive on. And they're not getting it. And I, I don't think a lot of players can handle it. I've never had to play in front of no fans, so I, I can't comment on it. But I do think some players are finding it really hard to, to adapt to it. Whereas at Rangers are winning all the time and, you know, there's no pressure on you as long as you keep winning. Well, you Peter, know yourself, I... Ruffy. On you go, Ali. I was just going to say, I, I think what you've seen over what what you've seen over the last few months on, on social media is a a, a a real significant amount of of criticism towards the, the Celtic manager, and 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 some of it has been fairly vitriolic at times. I think if you if you have a full stadium. I think you you get a semblance more of, of some support as well. Now I'm not I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that there is not a reaction to the likes of that Sparta Prague result and 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 the Ferenc Varos result. Of course they would they would make their feelings known, but there is also a very strong sense of of support for the manager and for the team, which I think feels conspicuous by its absence when all you have is a very febrile environment of social media when you when you're shorn of it and to take Ruffy's point about Ibrox I actually think the Rangers players have benefited from not playing in front yeah, of that I pressure agree. I think sometimes they respond very differently I think uh, it makes them inhibited and they go into their shell a bit when there's when, when there's pressure on them from their own support I think they've benefited almost from, from having that well, I, 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 wow, I'm going to disagree with you guys. I mean, and I know that that's three of you who are all in this camp together, but uh, I have to pay tribute to Stephen Gerrard. He's got a team battling, they're playing, they're organised, uh, and they believe in him and they've stuck to the game plan. Um, for me, I think, to put it in a sense of perspective, I think Neil Lennon was good enough to come in and steady the ship when Brendan decided he wanted to move to the Premier League and threw his dummy out of the pram. I think Neil Lennon was good enough um, to get that side to to win the league, albeit it was called early because of the COVID-19. Um, and he was good enough for all the Celtic people on social media um, to be backing him then. But um, some of them have got short memories calling him tactically naive and inept. Um, a manager sometimes is thrown under a bus by his players and 60,000 fans, unless they can all play at the back behind Julian, Ayer and Duffy, I don't think it makes a blind bit of difference. I think some of the conduct of the Celtic players, they should hang their heads in shame. Neil Lennon was good enough to get them over the line for the first title there, good enough to win it last season, and some of them need to take a long, hard look at themselves. They've thrown the manager under the bus. I don't think you get away with that, those players, when there's a full crowd in. I think there's more pressure on you to turn up. Tom. I agree with Ali. I agree with Ali. I, honestly, when, when, when you're, 
if you, I agree what you're saying. I think there is players at Celtic the now who are not having the manager and won't rid him. There's absolutely no doubt about it. We've seen that at the game at the weekend. The body language, some players were walking about. You know, it was unacceptable. But as Ali says, if there's 60,000 fans there breathing down your neck and telling you how you get your finger out and know in certain terms, then I think you would raise your game, you would up your game. I think a lot of Celtic players are getting away with it now. They're getting away with murder, to be honest, because there's no supporters there. Well, it's uh, one of those topics that will go on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and almost certainly Friday after the European results, um, as ever. Uh, the race at the top is interesting. The race at the bottom is just as interesting. Uh, I think you can go from anything from Motherwell downwards towards Hamilton. But with that in mind, all that remains for me to say is thanks to Ruffy, thanks to Alison, thanks to Tam. Don't forget to like, share and follow us. And of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Thank you for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.